welcome back to the garage. Today, we're working uh, outside again. It is just about uh, quitting time, so I'm sure there's going to be plenty of cars driving by, so we'll have a lot of that noise. We also have a skid steer doing some work in the lot right behind me, so there's going to be plenty of beeping. What we're looking at today is diagnosing a no charge or a low charge scenario on an old Mopar. The two things that we're concerned about in a charging system on an old Mopar, really on anything, is the alternator and the voltage regulator. On a Mopar we've got them separate. This is the alternator and back here is the voltage regulator. First let's just look at how we're going to do the test. On the alternator, we basically have three wires. We've got a single larger wire, usually 10 gauge. This isn't 10 gauge, but it's obviously been replaced. And then we have either one or two field wires. This wire is effectively the wire that charges the vehicle. It's the output of the alternator. And the field wire or field wires are what tell it to uh, charge. It's what energizes the alternator causes output. To do this test we're going to need two tools. We're going to need a voltmeter, something that can read up to say 20 volts, 15 volts, something in that range of DC, and we're going to need just a jumper wire stripped at both ends. We're going to test the alternator and the voltage regulator at the back there. With the key in the off position, we should have, on the alternator output, we should have battery voltage, and the field wires should both read zero. We should have no voltage. If we have voltage at the field wires with the key off, we have a wiring problem. If we have no voltage here at the alternator output with the key off, then we likely have either a dead battery or we have a wiring problem or a blown fusible link. With the key in the on position, we're going to have voltage at the alternator output. It's going to be lower than what it was with the key off because we've energized the entire vehicle so the voltage drop is going to be more. You can still you can see it went from 12 and a half down to 11.7 but we're still going to have near battery voltage. What's important is these field wires should now have voltage. It doesn't have to be full battery voltage but it's got voltage so we've got power coming to the alternator and you can see we've got a lot less on one side. So one side is high, that's the inlet, so that's power going into the field windings. The other one, the one that's low, is the output from the field windings. The output from the field winding is what goes back to the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator on this is simply a switch. All it's going to do is connect this field terminal here to ground. And when it connects it to ground, electricity then flows through the field windings, energizing it and causing the alternator to charge. Before we do the run test, you're going to want to connect directly to the output terminal on this alternator some sort of a jumper wire. You can remove the existing field wire if it helps you to get onto it. So I've got a jumper wire that comes back and it's not connected to anything right now. And then I have the voltage meter, the voltmeter here, just connected to the battery. So I'm just checking battery voltage. 
So right now we're at 12.3 volts. If I take this wire, connect it to the negative terminal, so I'm just grounding it, you can hear the engine loaded up because it's pushing, and our voltage runs up to 14. So that tells me that when the field in the alternator is energized, it's charging. So this alternator is good. We know that it's not an alternator problem at this point. So if we're not charging, we have a no charge scenario, but this passes, then we know it's our voltage regulator or some wire up until it. It's most likely the voltage regulator. And that's all it takes to diagnose the charging system on one of these. Thanks for watching.